Hello and welcome to a live after reading. I'm Tim Niederreiter, and with me today is a fellow podcaster and author, Jason Lavelle. Welcome to the podcast, Jason. Hey, Tim. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Well, it's great to have you here. What? Tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Uh, just, just very briefly, the, pod, the podcast you manage and stuff, and uh, your book. All right, great. Well, I'll, I'll try to be. Be brief. Okay. So I am one of the yeah, hosts. Just try of to do the, three uh, things briefly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll try to do it really fast. Uh, I'm, one, I'm one of the hosts of Spilling Ink, which is a weekly YouTube webcast, and it's an author roundtable. So we gather around and and uh, shoot the crap and have a lot of fun, talk about the, uh, the writing business. And then I also host The Raven, which is a storytelling podcast. So you get on there and listen to cool stories and, and uh, hear a little bit of a deep dive from the authors that create in them. And then I also host host uh, Unafraid, which is a podcast that shares stories from the LGBTQ community. So those are my podcasts, and I also write books. I write uh, paranormal thrillers. I've got a whole series of those. They're they're really fun. Uh, my newest release is an is a uh, collection of uh, speculative fiction and horror stories uh, called A Flutter of Darkness. Was that quick enough? No, that was plenty quick. That that was lightning <laughs> speed. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so, a flutter in darkness. I actually read the first story in the collection, though. I you'll have to remind me of the title because I'm so t- so bad with titles. It's honey. Uh, oh, it's honey. Yes. <laughs> uh, the title. Uh, but this sh- this story is pretty creepy. So, there's definitely a horror vibe to some of the stories in this collection. I I must admit, I have not gotten through the other ones yet because uh, yeah, turnaround time on this podcast is very short. I've actually read more of your stuff than most of my guests uh, because, yeah, but anyway, that's, that's just a dark admission that I'm more than willing to make. Uh, so what's your writing process like when you approach a short story, I guess, and does it vary by genre? Oh goodness. That's, that's a really good question. I actually haven't thought about this question before. I don't think that it varies by genre for me. Um, I, I know that because I, I do write in a few different genres, but usually I'll have, either one small idea or uh, my muse is actually my wife. My wife has all sorts of crazy dreams and she's had all sorts of wild experiences in her life. And so she'll tell me, Hey, I just had a, a dream about, you know, I, I just, you know, met my, my grandma in the afterlife or something weird like that. And I'll be like, Oh, met my grandma in the afterlife. There we go. We're, we're rolling on the story right there. So the, the way I write any fiction and it's much easier with short fiction, I, I will say, is that I'll take an event that is either something that's real life that I've experienced or something that someone else has has related to me or like a, a dream for my wife. And I'll use that as the kind of the, the backbone of the story. And then I'll build the fiction around that. And in that way, I always have that backbone to go back to if I ever get lost and I feel like, and I, I could be wrong, my, my readers may disagree, but I feel like having that backbone of truth or quasi-truth actually makes the stories a little bit stronger. So, so that's how I typically approach them. Um, and in a, in a novel, you know, you may have, you know, 80 to, you know, 200,000 words if you write epic fantasy like uh, someone I know. <laughs> oh, um, yes. Or... <laughs> uh, I wonder who that could be. <laughs> but uh, for for me, my, you know, most of my novels are you know around eighty k, and so you have a lot of time to develop this idea. With a short story, what I'll do is I'll take that that core idea and I'll strip everything away except for the the very most I, I'm, I'm not going to say poignant, but um, the the most hard hitting or raw facets of it, and build on that and just hit those really raw parts so that I'm I'm really kind of jabbing at the reader's emotion. Because whether it's happy or sad or horrific, I, I really want to make an impact with them, you know, kind of get under the reader's skin. So I, I try to strip out any of the extraneous stuff with short stories because there's just not enough time to, to put them in there. Oh, that makes sense to me. I mean, what really struck me about the this, this first short story, it's Honey, the, the, the Honey short story is that you kind of start with it because it's it is a little timey wimey, as I say. You know, there's a little it bit of a, flashbacks <laughs> and <laughs> yep. stuff, but it starts with the basically right near the end of the story. It starts quite quite far into the narrative, but then moves backward. And 
I guess what I'm getting at here is that there's that basically the main emotional punch we were promised that this story isn't going to be some kind of because because the the because the the second basically the second half of the timeline is so different from the first half. It makes perfect sense. It's like okay, we we need to know right up front the stories can be horrific basically. Yeah. Because otherwise that well, ending would basically be coming out of nowhere. Like the second half is a different story, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, and and that's a story too, where uh, you know sometimes that's you know that's that's kind of a, a device that I'll use, and some people will call that a, a gimmick, and it doesn't really matter what you call it. But there are some stories that when you go to lay it out, because I I don't always outline things, but I can usually see them in my head, where I felt like going in a, a linear direction with the story, just from you know point A to B to C to D, um, it wasn't really going to have the same kind of impact that I wanted because it was a it was a slow starter. So I figure if I kind of start at the end and pepper those those scenes of misery that she's experiencing in there, it might add a little bit more of a kind of a, a jolt to the story. Or at least that's what I was was hoping that it would do because with a short story, a lot of times you're not really getting the punch until maybe the last page because it's yeah. You know, it, it may be structured like a novel, but you don't have room to have, you know, your good climax, climax and then a nice denouement. And um, you're a lot of times it's like, boom, that last page you hit the reader with something. It's well, and I guess that. that well, you did that, too. Genre. That's the funny thing. Is you actually did that. In both, you did that in that story as well. That's what I like about it, actually, as far as the, the structure is that you, you, a lot of short stories, you kind of have you have to end on this punch, the note of like, this is going to this this is going to hurt the reader kind of or this is going to make a feel yes. something. Yeah. Because yep, that's how, I mean, it's just like, you know, how you end a novel with a satisfying denouement, you end a short story with, with a satisfying punch kind of thing. Yeah. That's, it, that seems to be how it goes. I'm not a short story expert by any means. So I don't write a whole lot of them myself. No, and but but you're you're absolutely right, and I think that um, you know if I read a someone's short story and it doesn't have that punch at the end, I always feel a little bit disappointed myself, you know. And um, there there are some short stories in this book. There's one called Searching for Forever that is not a horror story. Um, it's more of a it's more of a fantasy or or a, a drama type story. There are no dragons or wizards, but it's about a, a neurodivergent uh, girl who's dealing with some big changes in her life and a big part of her life is lived in her imagination and the books she reads and she finds out that this world is going to be taken away from her and it has some some really devastating effects on her and i said that it's it's not horror but at the same time you you still try to get those punchy parts where it's it's jabbing at the reader a little bit to to get under their skin get into their core and kind of poke at their heart just a little bit Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I actually, it's funny because I just remembered this story recently, and it's a, it was a story I must have read when I was in school, like in probably fifth, maybe third or fourth grade, really. And it was about this. It was a dog sled race story, so it was like set in Alaska, probably a hundred years ago, something like that. And it, but the, but the, I just remember the end of this story. I'm like, wow, okay. I remember everything about that story now, basically, or all the important stuff. Like, okay, the the kid who's the main character's dog dies, and I'm not going to say the name of the story, so this is no spoiler. His dog has like a heart attack, basically, heart bursts, collapses, dead, right? Like a few, like like within sight of the finish line. This is at the, at the as the climax of the story, and the Native American guy, who's also a dog, the Native American dog sled guy, or Inuit dog sled guy, I can't remember which. He picks up the dog and carries it across the finish line. It's like it's that kind of thing that sticks. That this poignant moment, you know, that sticks with people in a short story. Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I've. They actually made a movie out of that, and I've seen it. It was pretty horrific. <laughs> yeah, it's it's but, a really know. sad story. As a kid, I hated it, but I still remember it. So the, it did something right. Well, well, yeah, and our our purpose as authors is to entertain people, and I feel like my purpose is to uh, cause them to feel something. That's what I want. I want people to, <laughs> yeah, I want them either to be crying in their bed or just to be horrified or to feel really happy. And okay, with both most of mine, you're not going to feel really happy, but uh, <laughs> you know, we we want our readers to feel something. You know, even if you're even if, if you're writing something that's that is not set in our reality, if you're writing, you know, far out sci-fi or, or fantasy, you're, we're still trying to get the readers to connect with the characters and, and the setting and the situation so that they feel it. You know, that's that's what it's all about is getting that that cool escape from our reality, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I think I couldn't agree with you more, but I think the one the, the one of the interesting things and well, we won't be sticking around on this subject forever, but it is kind of interesting that. When 
your uh what what you know I, what well, what my brother says i have a twin brother and when he says when he doesn't write but he reads and he he says the point of a story is to extract a catharsis right that's how he why he reads stories at least you know according to him whatever um and it's interesting to me because it's like okay if the point of a story is to extract a catharsis from the reader make them feel something really big and explosive there's there's kind of a couple ways to do that. Is to either just hit them with something really hard that you know just smashes them. That's like a lot of the horror stories do that, I think. Or there's the the way like Tolkien, you know, the J.R.R. Tolkien, my genre, right? Big granddaddy of the fantasy genre. It was all about the U catastrophe, where it's like, okay, it looks like everything all is lost, and then we save the day. That's and if you can save the day in a way that makes sense and is believable, but you really, really did think the hero couldn't make it out of there. That that is a huge that that just is a great way to invo- to get that ending. Anyway, especially in a longer work, I should say, because obviously uh, short stories are a little different. Well, and you know when when you look at big classic works like that too, um, you know especially with with uh, Tolkien, you know, looking at like the the Lord of the Rings, you know, there's there are many themes going on in mm-hmm. those stories. Um, but you know, one that that really stands out the most to me, be, besides why the hell didn't they just take the eagles all the way to Mordor to begin with? <laughs> yeah, idiots. A little bit of a bottle but there. Uh, <laughs> is is that uh, you know the the good of the many outweighs the good of the few, and you know showing that these these few characters are going through intense, incredible suffering and hardship mm. in order to to save their world to save everyone in middle earth. And, and, and that's a, that's a very powerful theme. And, and I, I don't think that's a theme that you can, you can get with something like a 3000 word short story. You know, that's something that, Absolutely. that uh-huh. takes a big old tome of a, of a book, you know? Yeah. A thousand pages or so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so as far as your, your, uh, your thrillers and stuff, your novels, could you tell us a little bit about those and uh, what kind of uh, how long is your series, first of all? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I'll definitely tell you about it. OK, so mine, uh, my my supernatural thrillers, paranormal thrillers, whatever we want to call them. Basically, they're they're this they're they're set in our world. And in fact, they're most of them are set right here in West Michigan, where I live. And paranormal things happen to the characters. So, you know, with with the cold room. Um, we have, um, you know, our main character is a, a woman that lives here in West Michigan. She meets and falls in love with a, a man. They're living their life. She moves into the, his house only to find out that uh, he's not living there alone. There is some type of poltergeist or ghost or spirit, something that's living in this house, and it wants her gone. And it begins to uh, violently lash out at her. Um, and, it, and it's pretty intense and uh, very scary. And the the genesis of that book was, I mean, it, it actually took place in my house, the first house we lived in here in, in Holland, my wife and I. And uh, we experienced a lot of the things that happened in that book. And so that's where that's where that seed of truth kind of came in with it. You know, once once it was years later and we moved out of the house, I was like, okay, I'm going to start putting this down and I'm going to have to fictionalize it <laughs> um, to, to make it more fantastic. But um, those things, those things really happen to us. And so you're, you're looking at a story that's, you know, got a lot of action, you know, there's some naughty stuff, there's some sex in it, you know, it, it's, it's re- <laughs> all the good stuff. Um, you yeah, know, yeah, it's, you want, with the stuff people are here for, right? That's <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> it's really fast pace. Um, but there's also uh, this uh, paranormal element. Okay. And that book wasn't meant to be a series. That was meant to be the one and only novel I ever wrote. So that was my first mm-hmm. book. And then, uh, a few years later, I wrote a follow-up to it uh, called The Dark of Night, and uh, not a similar plot, but uh, a similar idea where it takes place in this world, but there are paranormal elements to it. Um, and and that's, that's kind of what I like to do. I like to have everything grounded in our world so that we can relate to it um, as much as possible, but then add in some of that creepy stuff that we've all experienced. You know, we've all driven under streetlights and have... have them go out or walk into a room and you get the sudden chill or look over at the the guy or gal in the in the corner of the room and be like oh there's something not right about that person only what i do is i i take and i explore those ideas which uh, i think a lot of people that write horror or paranormal stuff do and we all 
kind of do it in our own way. So it's not horror, you know, it's not slasher stuff, it's not Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but it is it is spooky, you know, it, it's scary. It's not stuff that uh, <laughs> that you you necessarily uh, read when you're when you're stuck alone in your your house without somebody there with you to keep you safe, because you never know oh, yeah. what may come out of those pages. Ooh, or come out of your closet. Because <laughs> you read the wrong words the wrong time. That's right. Don't read yeah. it three times in a row. <laughs> sensing sensing weakness, the spirit of the book emerged. And okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, so that that's that's interesting stuff. I, I think I, I mean I tend to write more far flung stuff. I mean it's just my taste. But it, is, it always interests me when I hear from people who write stuff that's closer to home, especially when it's, you know, literally you lived in the house, right? This is very close to your experience in some ways. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's that's interesting. I It's funny because actually one time, I one of my earlier novels that I published, uh, it was a cyberpunk book, but it took place basically in my hometown <laughs> in the future. And so it was kind of funny how I got that, that. That was a weird little twist to it, right? Like, okay. So they live in my house, but of course, my family isn't here anymore. It's the future. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, you know, and it's it's funny is that uh, you know, writing writing that first book, there were times where I would look over my shoulder while I was writing because it just felt creepy. It's like, okay, Ooh. I'm, I mean, like the, I'm writing about things that happened in my life, <laughs> you know, and and part of the. Uh, not to, not to get too uh, far into it, but um, part of the book was that when these characters tried to talk about what was happening to them, more bad stuff would happen. And mm. that actually happened to us as well, to my wife and I, is whenever we tried to tell somebody about what was happening or even have a conversation ourselves, more things would happen in the house. And we're like, okay, we just, we've got to go dark on this. We're just going to pretend it's not happening. <laughs> and eventually we'll get a new house. And, and we did. Well, I'm glad you did. That <laughs> sounds really <laughs> harrowing, honestly. Uh, I I don't think I could. I mean, I basically lived in a, the same area my entire life, mostly in the same house. And I'm like, okay, so yeah, I don't know what I would do if this house was out to get me. That would be weird. <laughs> that would be a, damn, yeah. a, a bad situation. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's spooky. But, you know, it's the, the, the fun thing about horror or paranormal stuff is, you know, we – we're experiencing it in a in a safe place. You know, you're yeah. you get to experience this cool stuff, uh, you know, through the the safety of your Kindle or through a paperback, and you know, just like you know, you you've mentioned fantasy a couple times, and I actually I love fantasy. That's what I what I grew up reading, and uh, so it was. Uh, it's one of those where I've got to see all these amazing worlds, but. Uh, safely, you know, I, I was yeah. never in the middle of a battle or anything. I was never lost at space. I was always safe in my bedroom, not out playing with other kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that, yeah. Did you, that reminds me. Did you ever read uh, Diana Wynne Jones at all? I don't think so. Okay, because she had a series of books called. Uh, well, I, I think the one I, I never actually read this one. I haven't actually yet read this one, but the dark, the tough guide to fantasy land which is kind of a meta fantasy about people who go on like a vacation to a fantasy world. <laughs> oh, okay. I, but I read this, I read like the spinoff or sequel, which is from the perspective of the people who organize the fantasy world for these visitors. So they're like the, they organize for the tourists. Uh, it's called dark Lord of dark home. that was a really good book. And it's, but it's also weird because it's very dystopian. Like, cause the, the people from earth presumably are basically colonizing this fantasy world by just, but only for tourism, and it's disaster tourism. So, like, you've got to see, they've got to see battles and fight at Dark Lord and stuff. And so, you know, people actually get killed in this setting just so the people can actually, so that the, these awful tourists can wander through. <laughs> nice, I love it. <laughs> and it is a really, it's a, it's a surprisingly dark book at times, but it's a really good one. Oh, that um, sounds really cool. Yeah. And the main character is like a botanist wizard who's chosen to be the Dark Lord that year, which is why he's the Dark Lord. Or he's a geneticist, I suppose, because his children are like griffins and stuff because he's created these <laughs> creatures. <laughs> That's so it's, awesome. it's weird, but it's good. And that was, uh, yeah, uh, Diane Wynne Jones, really great writer. She wrote a bunch of other stuff, too, obviously. But, you know, there you go. That was a long career, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Anyway, um, so... Uh, we, we are actually running a little low on time though. So I, sorry about just gobbling up time with my reminiscence there. <laughs> it happens, I suppose. 
So, uh, yeah. So, w- what have you been listening to or reading lately? Anything you want to share with the, the listeners? Yeah, for sure. I love the media corner. I, I love that. Okay, so <laughs> I, I'll tell you what. I actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you first what I've been what I've been watching because I, I just paused an episode to come down here to record this with you. I've been watching uh, Hunters, the Hunters on Amazon Ooh. Prime, um, and it's about uh, Nazi hunters, which is kind of my my dream job. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's it's it is just fascinating. Uh, produced by Jordan Peele. Um, just, uh, no, uh, no punches pulled at all. So if you're looking for a really intense show to watch the hunters, that's good stuff. Um, let's see. And what I listen to, I'll tell you what, my, my favorite podcast is called my favorite murder. And, Ooh. uh, it is a true crime podcast, but it's also a uh, comedy. So the, the two hosts are, are, uh, two women who are comedians and they, they've been, you know, writers for TV shows, things like that. Um, and they're fascinated with true crime, which which I am as well. So on every episode, they they talk about you know a new um, you know crime that has happened or a new serial killer, a new murderer. Um, only when they're talking about there, there's a little bit of levity to it because they're joking around a little bit while they talk about it to kind of take some of the sting out of it. But um, my favorite murder, holy cow, what a what a fun podcast! Uh, oh, but I also fantastic. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's great. It really is. But uh, I also really like uh, Snap Judgment, um, which is a uh, which is an NPR podcast, um, and they do they have a, a spinoff called Spooked, which is all um, it's all paranormal based true stories told by the people who have experienced them. So that's another really really cool podcast that I love listening to. But so that's what I'm listening to. All right, now what am I reading? Hey, the <laughs> most recent uh, book that I've read was uh, Sleepwater Static by Catherine oh, Hudson. Oh boy, yeah, a favorite yeah. Of the show. Oh my goodness! Uh, yes, I'm I'm, I'm I'm not managed to get around to reading that one yet, but yeah, well, yeah, yeah that's it. She's great. Oh my god, she is fabulous! <laughs> Holy crap! But uh, <laughs> but yeah, Sleepwater Beat and Sleepwater Static, man, both just phenomenal pieces of fiction. I cannot tell you enough how much I love them. And then uh, uh, shortly be behind those, uh, Our War by Craig DeLuey. I read mm-hmm. uh, this this last year. Another fantastic one. It's a and pretty good show. <laughs> What's it? oh yeah and another okay. friend of the show yeah I've had him on wonderful a couple times. wonderful yeah and, and that's it's it's that's a it's a pretty dark and gritty story um, especially with what's going on in our country in the last few oh, years boy. but um, but anyhow so that's another really great one um, I love Tosca Lee I'm a big fan of Jacqueline Carey um, mm-hmm. she's actually she's been on my show she's a she's a fantasy author um, yeah. uh, her newest one is Starless which is absolutely fantastic as well so yeah I read a little bit. Uh, I read a little bit of everything and kind of love it all. Yeah, it sounds like you got a, you got a good selection there. That's for sure. So, uh, yeah. So actually, you did remind me though. I, I'm going to do a, my my turn at the media corner. Uh, <laughs> uh, is I actually have been watching The Magicians. I just started that on Netflix. That's the 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 TV series. It's uh, based on. Geez, I forget the author of the book. But anyway. Uh, it's very Narnia at first. And I thought, okay, this is not really my cup of tea. It's like adult Narnia. But then it turns into like really adult Narnia. And it's like, okay, this is more fun. Um, I'm, not, <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm pretty early into that show. So I'm not, I don't have much, I can't, spo- I can't say too much about it yet. But it's been fun so far. I've watched like about six or seven episodes. Well, did and you then, watch Carnival Row at all? No, I haven't watched that one at all. No, oh. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty bad at watching stuff, honestly. I'm, be- I'm slightly better at reading. And my, but the thing I'm best at is listening to stuff. Well, <laughs> That's where I get it, most of my media. You're you're a fantasy guy, man. The Carnival Row. It's I mean, there's you know fairies and and centaurs and and I okay. mean I mean there's there's just there's all sorts of amazing stuff and there's violence and sex. So it's like you get well, everything you, know, that, you that want. Pretty much would do it, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of violence, my other pick is actually gonna be kind of unusual for this show because usually. I, I don't pick stuff, but this is related to the other media stuff. This is, uh, um, it's actually a metal album. I'm a huge metal head and I don't talk about it on this show a lot, but this, this album, which I think is from 2018, it's called, uh, the silver scream by ice nine kills. And I can't, I'm not going to go too into it, but basically every song is based on a horror movie or a thriller movie. Like jaws has a, that a song inspired by jaws, a song inspired by the Stephen King movies. It, you know, um, why does Ice Nine uh, sound familiar? There was an, I, there was another band called Ice Nine, 
And that, that's just, it's the same band. They just changed the name slightly. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so they've been around for a while, but they changed the name. To, they added Kills on the end for some reason <laughs> a few years ago. <laughs> but I just got into them, and that this album really rocks. It's uh, it's kind of in between like the you're gonna hit. You, there's a mix of vocals, so it does some. There's some extreme vocals on this album. So if you're not into that, don't check this out. But anyway, it's a really good one. I I especially like the one that was the. I've never even seen a Halloween movie, but I like that one the best. I think that's my favorite one. That was called Stabbing in the Dark. Anyway, <laughs> that's a it's, great it's, song name. It's a, it's an awesome song too. It, it's really good. And uh, I mean, again, extreme vocals. So beware if you're not into that kind of thing. If you don't like a good roar or two in your metal, maybe not for you. <laughs> 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 but most of me, I think meant most of the people who really identify as metalheads now are going to enjoy a good, a good scream and a good roar. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's that's. I just thought. I mean, you know, maybe I sh- this is my show. I can talk about whatever I want. So I did. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you can. <laughs> so thanks for being on the show, Jason. Uh, tell people where they can find your work and you on the internet. Well, thanks, Tim. It's it's really been fun chatting with you. I've I've enjoyed this quite a lot. Uh, and and people can find me on uh, you know easiest ways just to look me up on Amazon, Jason Lavelle, L A V E L L E, and you'll see all my books there. I've also got a lot of short stories that have been published in uh, in in you know various publications on on Amazon. So you'll find those on there. Or um, my newest book uh, was released by Three Furies Press. So you could go to threefuriespress dot com, and I know they've got paperbacks on sale on there. So those are always cool. I like having paperbacks. But uh, if you're looking for podcasts, uh, any, anywhere you can listen to podcasts, type in either Spilling Ink or The Raven or Unafraid, and you'll find me there. Awesome. Awesome. So as for this podcast, you can find us at mentalsellerpublications.com. You can find my books on Amazon.com. That's Tim Niederreiter. And uh, Niederreiter is spelled N-I-E-D-E-R-R-I-T-E-R. Yeah, it's two R's in the middle. It's a it's a it's a confusingly long name, and the E's and the I's are switched in places. It's 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 ugly, but it's there. It's my name, <laughs> and it's pronounced like Need a Writer. So if you ever need, and soon we'll be migrating over to that site, hopefully, <laughs> where you can see everyone can learn the name phonetically. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Need a Writer. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for being on the show, Jason. Lots of fun. Great having you. Wonderful. Thanks again, Tim. All right. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you next week. That tears it.